All right, a couple FRQs for you. 2013, number six, which means it's an infinite series, which I'm going to guarantee you're going to have an infinite series question on this year's exam. And it will have other aspects to it. It'll have a linearization piece to it or a uh, Euler's method to it, something like that. So this one is from long enough ago that they don't really build them like this anymore. Uh, they tell me off the bat f of 0 is equal to negative 4. And then they give me this. There's just some random function. They give me virtually no information in the setup to the problem. So we got to go back to, well, an infinite series. Um, I'll just call it P of N of X is F of X plus F prime of X, X plus F double prime of X, X squared over 2 factorial plus F triple prime of X x to the third over 3 factorial plus dot 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 and they say it's known that f of 0 equals negative 4. Well, if I plug in 0 you're just going to get f of 0 because everything else is 0. So therefore if it is negative 4 then f of 0 equals negative 4 that's your first term so that's going to be negative 4. And I'm not showing this a really, really great way. Uh, it, it's sufficient. I'll leave it at that. P1, meaning just the first term, equals of 1 half equals negative 3. So they say show something. I'm like, yeah, whatever. If 1 half equals negative 3, then we're looking at P of 1 of x equals negative 4 plus uh, F prime of x times one half and we're saying that equals negative three so plus three hold it got backwards there so plus four plus four times two times two we get f prime of x equals 1 times 2, 2, which is what they said it would equal, so we just proved it. That was part A. Notice is the key to this problem, knowing this fact right here. Nothing else I can say besides know that. Make sure you have it cold. Uh, now we go with the second derivative is negative 2 thirds. And we basically get to do what we've already done. We know first term and the second term, uh, find p of 3 of x. p of 3 of x, we know equals negative 4 plus 2x plus, they say f second derivative is negative 2 thirds x squared over 2 factorial, and third derivative plus 1 third x of 3 over 3 factorial. Come back, come back. Can I come back or not? Guess not. All right, so I'll write them in. I'll probably come back after I'm done writing them in. I don't know what just happened to those. Plus one third. So p of three of x equals. Hmm. Make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, that's right. Negative four plus two x. 2 is going to cancel, minus x squared over 3, 3 times 2 is 6 times 3 is 18, plus x to the third over 18. And that's it for that part. Let's try a little green here. C. The function h has derivative given by h prime is whatever. Um, f of 2x is known that blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm just, I've only got p of 3 of 2x to work with, so I'm going to work with that. Get 4 plus 2 times 2x minus 2x squared over 3 plus 2x to the third over 18. P of 3 of 2x equals negative 4 plus 4x minus 
four x squared over three plus two will cancel two x to the third over nine. Now we know that equals h prime of x, therefore h of x equals the integral of p3 of 2x dx. Come on, give me a little space. There we go. Which is the integral of negative 4 is 4x minus 4x squared over 3 is 2x to the third over 4 with respect to x. Integrate it, we get negative 4x plus 2x squared, x squared over 2 cancels, minus 4x to the third over 9 plus uh, 2x to the fourth over 4. Oh, that's a 9. Bad handwriting. x to the fourth over, I feel like I've made a mistake here, and I have. Where did I make my mistake? Up here. This is a 4. Excuse me. Two times two is four. Two times two is eight. They cancel. I'm left with four. X to the fourth over four. They cancel. I get x to the fourth over nine plus c. And they give me h of zero is seven. Since all these will cancel out, c is seven. We'll come back over here and say h third degree polynomial. That's really important to read that equals 7 minus 4x plus 2x squared minus 4x to the third over 9. Done because they only wanted a third degree polynomial. Tricky stuff. Why well, we spent so much time on infinite series. Okay, grass clippings. I'd like to make sense of the problem. I can't always do it. I remember the plankton problem. I could not make sense of it. it just didn't make any sense to me. We put a ton of clippings in a bag, and then it slowly but surely decomposes. We don't keep adding clippings. How do I know that? Because I've read the problem. I don't know it just looking at the problem. All right. And off we go. It says find the average rate of change. Well, this is a calculator problem. I don't have a calculator handy, so I'm just going to show you what I can do. I'm basically going to say average rate of change. And I would actually write that out on a real test. It is A30 meaning plug 30 into this, minus a naught, again plugging 0 into that, over 30 minus 0. Blast it out, and I get negative 0 0.197 pounds a day. Did they ask for this one to interpret? No, they just want units, so watch out for units. Part B, they say find the value of a prime of 15. So I'm going to use my math 8. I'm going to say uh, a prime of 15 is dbt. I'm not going to write out this whole thing because it will take forever. At t equals 15. Blast it into my calculator. Just put this in with math 8. And plug 15 in at the end. And I get negative 0 0.164 pounds per day. And I say on day 15, uh, I want to write that. When t equals 15, the clippings, and I'm abbreviating, I would write all this out, are decreasing. Again, I would write all that out at a rate of, and I don't have to write the negative, 0 0.164 pounds per day, because I said they're decreasing. All right. That one's not as big a deal. I've often made a big deal about, oh, you got to write this just a certain way, but it's not that big a deal. Now they say, find the time when the amount of clippings equals the average. Well, first we need to find the average. If you recall, average is 1 over... Average... 1 over 30 minus 0, integral from 0 to 30, A of t, dt. Blast that into a calculator, and you get 
2635 equals 2.753 pounds. I'm going to use this number up here when I do my math going forward, uh, but round things to three decimal places, even though that's not a final answer. And then it's 6.687, to the T equals 2.753. Divide by 6.687. Again, I'm not using 2.753. I'm using the bigger number up here. When I put it in my calculator, I can just grab that number so I don't have to write it down. Then I'm going to take the natural log and move the T out front. Take the natural log. And then I'm going to divide by 0 0.931. Let the calculator do the dirty work, and I get T equals 12.415 days. Which, by the way, if you get like 90 days or something, you are way off. So pay attention to the problem. It'll actually help you out a great deal. All right. Now, I've talked to people about this before, and this is definitely going to happen this year. There might be five or six parts to a problem. They will just randomly throw, hey, by the way, forget everything you've been working on. Not quite in this case, but often. Um, in this case, we're going to say that after 30 days, it's linear. So we are going to do the whole linear equation is the amount at day 30 plus, plus the derivative at day 30 times t minus 30. And that's just straight up point slope. That's, this is your y minus y1, and I've already added it across, equals m, that's your slope, times x minus x1. And x1 is 30, because they're telling us to start at day 30. Get rid of all this garbage. So, t equals, I plug in 30 into this formula, and I get 0 0.782928 plus I plug in this into math 8 and plug in 30 and I get negative 0 0.055976 negative 0 0.055976 and then I plug in t minus 30 and they ask a goofy question here uh, when's it going to be equal to 0 0.5? So 0 0.5 equals all of this. Blast it out, you should get t equals 35.054 days. That's a lot of math. Good luck.